This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Stamps versus Farmer. Mr. Stamps, is my understanding from the documents that you submitted to this court that you sustained some injuries at Mr. Farmer's restaurant. You are suing him for those injuries. You're asking this court to award you $35,000 for your medical expenses and $125,000 for emotional distress for a total award of $160,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor, it's correct. And Mr. Farmer, you believe that uh, this is all his own doing, and he's really lucky he didn't end up in jail. Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> so let's get into the legal sauce. Mr. Stamps, how did you get to this restaurant that day? Why'd you pick this one? Well, to tell you the truth, it was a, a beautiful day. I thought, you know, maybe I'll take my girl out. We'll go get a nice meal. So we hear about this place, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the right leg, left hip. Uh, what was... What's the name of your place, Mr. Farmer? My leg, your thigh, Your Honor. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Stamps, you went to my leg, your thigh. Yeah, I, and, and you know what? I heard this place has fantastic chicken. So we went there. And was the chicken fantastic? <laughs> well, you know, I wished it was. You know, we sat down. I'm ready to eat. Also, I want to impress her. You know, we've only been going on a couple months. And the chicken comes. I go and take a bite of it. I, I mean, it smelled like it was going to be good because the sauce. I go and take a bite. It's, oh, it's like it was completely raw. It was literally pink inside. I mean, I felt ill. No, I no, felt no. ill. You're serving uncooked chicken at no, the restaurant? No, sir. That is yeah. not the correct... Well, tell me about your restaurant. It's a chicken place. It's chicken, chicken wings, some fries. It's just a simple place, y'all. Okay, special recipe? We got a lot of special sauces, 30 different sauces. Yeah, salmonella sauce. <laughs> <laughs> your Honor, if he had any problem with this chicken, I was offering to fix it. I didn't get a chance. We How can... long have you owned this restaurant? Five years, Your Honor. And in that five years, have you had any other problems of this sort? We've had client uh, customers come up, and they might want some chicken done differently. They might want a different sauce. We they want it cooked? We want it replaced. Exactly. We don't have a problem cooking the chicken. If he had an issue with this chicken, he just has to bring it up to me, and I would have fixed it. I would just go get a whole new box of chicken and let him pick whatever sauce he wants. Just... Easy fix. Exactly. Easy Your... fix, exactly. Mr. You know what? I told you, I ate raw chicken. I literally took a bite of it. I felt ill. My mom has been telling me, since little kid, chicken hands. Don't touch the chicken hands. You're going to get sick. I'm thinking I'm going to get right. disease. I'm going to get pneumonia, as far as my mom is concerned. So you and bite I'm, into I'm... the chicken. Yeah, so I, I don't want to eat the chicken. I don't want to eat anything. In fact, I didn't eat anything for another day. I felt sick. And so what does he want to do? He's going to go cook, recook the raw chicken mm -hmm. with his chicken hands and, oh. and then give me more raw chicken. Because I'm sorry. So he, say, you know what? You run a place for 20 watched, years, you learn how to cook. We're going to have to... order in this court. Sorry. This is not a baseball field. It's a courtroom. So you bite into the raw chicken. Then what do you do? No, I just, I walked over to him and I just said, can I please have a refund? Do I, you show please. him the chicken? I, of course I show him the chicken. I had it in my hand. I put it on the counter. I said, look, it's completely pink. He offered to, to give you another meal. That's no, he offered fix, to take right? my half-bitten raw no. chicken and then take it and throw it back into, to the, into it, the fryer. No, and you were going to give him a new oh, meal, no, right? He did yes, not offer me a new thing. I offered to fix it, Yonard. I told him I offered He's to fix, fix the chicken, the old and he raw was ranting. He let me continue. Chicken. I can't hear him if you talk over him. That's, sorry, that's how it was. Sorry, I couldn't sorry. explain to him that I, how I'd fix it. Well, it's a simple fix. Give him his money back, right? No, sir, we don't. Yeah, that's right. Well, sir, mm -hmm. we don't do refunds. It's against our policy to do refunds. They don't do chicken either. <laughs> uh, this is what he was saying. This, he was attacking me the whole time. But I explained to him, there's signs behind the room, on the wall behind me. Okay. On the counter, we don't do refunds. We don't have to do refunds, Your Honor. Okay. We fix the chicken. You know what? He, he didn't really say that. He just said, I'm going to recook this chicken, including the little piece, the little bite in it. He wants oh. to take my, my bite with my little, with, with little thing and put it back in there. And then go no. back with his little salmonella hands and then touch my silverware and touch, touch the See, plant. I mean, I couldn't even talk for a day. So you like, didn't oh, like that option, so what did you do? I look, you know, I saw the register was open, uh, so I just grabbed the money from, from the register. I, and you know what? Listen, we were the only ones in the restaurant. It was empty. It was an empty Honor, restaurant. He was and, and, the and then what, then was what did you the do, restaurant. Mr. Farmer? First of all, he didn't have that conversation. He came up demanding a refund right off the bat. I said, You're already I tried to down, fix be it, honest. and he wouldn't even let me address how I'd fix it. He was going right into it. No, I want a refund. I want a refund. When I tried to explain to him, he just got even more angry. That's when he leans across the counter, goes in the register, pulls out a hot handful of cash, and starts to leave. Now, you, you pull a hunk of cash out of the register. No, you can I imagine. Didn't, I didn't. You know what? My cash was sitting there on top of the register. I figured... It wasn't that, in the register? No, it was on top of the register. It was in the register, It was on Honor. top of the register. The register. Listen, listen. There's, there's well, regardless there. of where it was, you reached across the counter and grabbed your cash... And, Out of the and then what happened? What happened is, is I made it maybe 
I, I two steps, and then he he, ta he tackled me from behind. No, completely no, I did beat not me up. Tackle. He slams my head into <laughs> he, the ground. You see, he cut my cheek. He, uh, my, my cheek. He gave me a black eye. I'm scared of my mind. Suddenly, the the, the 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 somebody locks the door, and me and my girlfriend are locked in there with no. two crazy. Now, people. Mr. Farmer, he said his money was up on top. No, it sir. wasn't on top. No, oh, no, please. I, I was counting change in the register when Be he comes man. up. Come, come on. on. He grabs the, the cash. Restaurant. And I'm thinking, this guy's nuts. I knew he was angry because I watched him before. We have a video of him getting angry, but yeah, I was watching oh, him. Yeah, and when he comes up, I knew he was angry. And I, He's watching me on I tried MTV. to calm him down, saying, "We'll fix yeah. it. We'll fix it." He grabs the money, and I'm thinking, "The guy's nuts." And I'm thinking, "He's watching. He's robbing us." Mr. Farmer, you submitted some surveillance video from inside your restaurant. Yes, Your Honor. Let's watch it. You walk me through it and tell me what's happening. Yes, sir. This is the two sitting at the table. They're getting louder and louder. At one point, he's throwing chicken, and she's yelling. I thought they were having a fun time. They were laughing. Yeah, when you put chicken in, in a napkin instead of eating it, it's fun. It's so much fun. Half-eaten chicken in a napkin, so he's it's a riot. Out. It's he's like a angry, coaster. And he's coming up to me right now. And I'm sitting there, I say, and I hear, oh, he's angry. And see, he stuck one right out of the register, right there. Oh, so I please. hop over the counter, and I go and try to crab him. Yeah, okay. about three seconds. And, you notice how quickly he reacts? And so when you go over the counter, right. what are you trying to do? I'm trying to... Tell the, Look, I, my back's to him, I told by him, the way. Look, put my the money back or I'm calling the police. So I'm trying to hold on to him so he can't escape. That's okay. what I'm trying to do. Keep Look, him in the there. Now, Mr. That Stamps. Way. I'm walking that way. I'm walking that way. I'm not walking towards Mr. the Mr. Stamps, you get your money and you start to leave, right? No, I was walking right along the, the, the counter and he jumps off the counter. He tackles me this way. The exit was that way. Did you fight him back? A little bit. The thing is, the guy tackled me to the ground. I had the money in my hand. He did tried, he tried to grab it for me, and I, and I ripped my arm out, and I hit him. That's, but, that's, you know, that's like, uh, it was... Yeah, it, 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 well, how do you remember that, Mr. Farmer? I hopped over the counter, as you saw. All right. I reached around, and I grabbed hold of him. And then he went down. He's starting to panic. He's starting to yell. His Jesus. girlfriend's yelling. Mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to hold on. Because when people hold you down, you I'm just, just trying to hold on, because I'm telling them, give the money back, I'm calling the police. You're trying to wait for the police. Exactly, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Stamps, you brought your girlfriend, Miss Jessica Moore, right? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Moore, you were there. What happened? Um, so as soon as um, Elgin went up to the counter and <laughs> asked to get a refund, I started filming because the guy was really aggressive. I knew something so bad, bad was going to happen. Was happening. He was holding she me was down. Filming. So what did happen? As soon as he hurdles tackles over, me. No. hurdles the hurdles counter, over the counter I try to warn Elgin that he's coming, and then as soon as he tackles him, I drop the phone. At this point, I'm terrified. He he's hitting him. She's terrified. He's on the ground. He's just beating me down. He gets to beat me to death like a. He only went on the ground. Did you yell. pummel him? No, sir. She look only at his went, face. When he she oh, yelled, Come look on. out, he's Believe coming. Your he went eyes. on the ground. The he ducked down like that, and so I was holding on to him the best I could. I didn't tackle him. I didn't even knock him down. He went down. He's trying Have to you escape. Seen the video he's tape? struggling, trying yeah. to get away. I'm just holding on. Now, Mr. Stamps, you did say that when Mr. Farmer reached for you, you came back with an elbow. She said, look out. You hear, look out, you react. You know, I figure the guy's tackling me. Also, though, the guy just served me bad food. As far as I'm concerned, that's criminal. If I sell you a car he stole and the car the doesn't have a wheel, I'm, I'm sorry. Him. We'll know, talk we'll about criminal. Miss Moore, you submitted the uh, video from Someone. your phone. I want to look at it and you take me through it. Yes, sir. All right, let's put it up on the screen. Go ahead, honey. I got it all on camera. You know, it's all chicken file. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, you don't do chicken either, you know? I'm sorry. This is ridiculous. I've had enough ideas. I'm sorry. I'm taking it no. off. No. See, I had no chance to argue with him. See, look where I'm walking. I'm walking, walking, walking towards the door. I go. Oh. So you dropped oh. your phone at that I dropped, point. As soon as he tackles him, I dropped the phone because I don't know what's going on. And that's and when it, all hell broke loose. Exactly. Yeah. No, but you can hear no, chairs yeah. broke. We crashed to the ground. So whatever happened with me, it was happening on the way to the ground. You know why? Because I was right. Mr. Sam, you me. reached across the counter and grabbed money. It used to be yours, right? Oh, uh, you know. He's coming to get his money, right? I don't know. It isn't his money because I I paid for I paid for cooked chicken. No sympathy for her. Look, this movie. Okay, tell me about your injuries. Very quickly, he mm. jumps the counter. Okay, tell me about your injuries. Well, listen. He, as I said, he slammed me to the ground. <laughs> no. I ended up busting no, my not. chin up. I got bruises yeah, all over blood. my face. I had a cut on my on my chin, and I had a, 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 a this terrible black eye that still is in a way, even though it's been a little bit of time. You know what? It was completely there was uh, blood uh, upsetting. everywhere. No, you know, this was not a paper cut because you've exactly. got thirty five thousand dollars in past medical bills. That's Look a big deal. Well, he, he was an amateur no, boxer. I don't that, know if you I told him, but, but you know, he was an amateur boxer. I did a little bit in college, but that was it. Hands are deadly weapons. You see. That exactly. He's holding me down. He's just no. beating me. And, and now, beating me. I would have rather the cops. Mr. Stamps. If the cops came, I could have said, Mr. Stamps. This guy. 
I've heard your story. Okay, Tell me about how this has impacted your life. You're asking this court to give you $125,000 for emotional distress. Tell me what you're going through. <laughs> I now, when I walk down the street, someone gets too close to me, I'm scared. It's like I have some kind of post-traumatic stress because I never in my life well, had this... someone tackle me from behind. But I talk because I choose not to be violent. But it doesn't give him the right to hold me down and beat me to death. Or stop us from leaving the restaurant. Yeah, I he mean, he held us, us in. in there. Well, do, do you all understand that it might make a business owner queasy or uncomfortable, maybe even alarmed, when an outraged customer reaches over the counter and grabs the money? Just that fact alone. You see why they would be uncomfortable with that? Yeah, I, 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 yeah I, listen, I, I, I hear what you're saying, and yes, I understand sir. putting myself in the other shoe. And the flip know, side, like... Mr. Farmer, it is no fun biting into chicken that can make you sick. Uh, you see why he was mad about this? I can understand. I totally understand. And I was gonna fix it. Mr. He's Stamps. not Spartacus, I'm sorry, you know? Mr. Stamps. It wasn't the Coliseum. Mr. Stamps. Fight. Mr. Stamps, as I look at this video where it is frozen, are you telling me that you were just peacefully gonna walk away? Do I look angry? Do I have a sneer? Am I Answer drooling? my question. No, I don't think it looks. I'm, I don't think it looks like I'm sad. You didn't think I was like coming after you. about to kick my butt. You thought I was going to let you run away. <laughs> uh, well, are you? Are you here? I walking out the Mr. door? Mr. Stamp, you didn't think I was going to Direct your after comments you. to me, Mr. Farmer. Your comments to me. Yes, sir. If y'all want to talk, I'll I'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you okay, won't okay, get I a decision, and me. that's I'll, my job. I hear you, I hear you. Now, Mr. Stamps, are you telling this court? that you didn't throw one blow? He whacks me in the back. I think, what, no. what's gonna happen to me? No. Am I gonna be paralyzed? I mean, I'm gonna knock to the ground. Yeah, of course you're gonna yeah. defend yourself. You don't let someone do something that could be a debilitating injury him, and just do nothing. So you did try to defend yourself? Just once, one punch, and that's it. Then he tackles me, he grabs my arm, the money falls to the ground. At that point, he could just say, you know no. what, I'm holding you down until the police come. That's you know what, what I, I did. I wanted so who called the cops? No, I wanted the police I to did, come. Your Honor. Okay, so you called the cops. Yes, Your Honor. And was anybody arrested? Well, listen, I wish he'd been there early because then instead of getting beaten up, I could have followed the complaint. Well, I know the her. answer to that. The reason no one was arrested is because both of you were kind of involved with this. This is a civil matter. <laughs> but look at his face, Your Honor. If it was a, if it was a fair fight, <laughs> they definitely have uh, different levels of uh, fighting well, abilities. No, Miss Moore, I understand why you think that, but let me give you a legal lesson. Mm -hmm. Just because someone is hurt on someone's property doesn't mean that the property owner or the business Even owner... Even if they attacked you? Uh, I was speaking, sir. Thank you. Just... <laughs> the fact that you are injured is not the only issue, not the only fact. I've got to look at what led to the injury and who's legally responsible. So here, I think I've heard enough and I'm ready to render my decision. <laughs> Folks, in every personal injury case, the plaintiff, you, Mr. Stamps, have to prove that Mr. Farmer, the defendant, did something wrong and that wrong caused your injuries. I, as a judge, have to look at the evidence, balance it, and make a decision as to who wins. Here, the evidence that you submitted is you and Miss Moore went to the restaurant, try this famous chicken. You bite into the chicken and you think you're gonna get sick. It is so uncooked. Understandably, you go to the counter, you're kind of irate. You want your money back. For some reason, their policy says you don't get your money back. You get more chicken. That was not satisfactory to you, so you reach across the counter, you grab the money, and then, as you have presented to this court, Mr. Farmer attacked you. That's what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Mr. Farmer, you see this a bit different. Yes, sir. He could have easily fixed this by letting you get him another meal. Well, of course, Your Honor. Right? And we wouldn't have had this problem. <laughs> but no, then when he reaches across the counter, you're trying to make sure that he doesn't get away with what looks like a crime. Exactly. And so you put your hands on him. I put my hands on him and held him from... Well, here's from the problem, away. gentlemen. Both of you engaged in what could be a crime. You taking money and you attacking somebody. Mr. Farmer, looking at the evidence, 
You came over the counter to restrain him. Now, while the law allows you to restrain him, you must do so peaceably. And I've heard evidence that maybe it didn't happen that way. Miss Moore dropped her phone, so we didn't get it on tape. But the evidence that it may not have been peaceable is his face and his scars and his medical bills. And explain. And that is not supposed to happen. Mr. Stamps, throwing that elbow... You started what the law calls mutual combat. You as the plaintiff cannot begin a fight and then ask the law to protect you and hold someone else responsible. So because you engaged in mutual combat, I must find against you and in favor of Mr. Farmer. And that is my final verdict and this matter is adjourned. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Gary Martin Hayes has to say. In my opinion, the defendant used reasonable force in restraining the plaintiff who grabbed money from the cash register. This is known as the merchant's privilege to detain for investigation. If the owner suspects shoplifting, he may reasonably detain the suspect for a limited period of time just for the purpose of investigating the crime. Now, if the defendant had used excessive force, this would have been an entirely different verdict. When someone holds you down, it's not neutral. When it's someone one attacks you? You both had plenty of time to testify. I understand this is important to you. Sheriff, take these folks out of my courtroom. This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Siegel versus Davis. Ms. Siegel, it's my understanding that you are suing Mr. Davis for injuries you sustained in your apartment that you rent from him. He didn't make the repairs you requested, and you were injured as a result. You're asking this court to award you $65,000 for past medicals, $25,000 for future medicals, including surgery, $60,000 for lost earnings, $150,000 for pain and suffering, and a total award of $300,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Davis, it's your position that she is the author of her own fate. She took chances she shouldn't have taken, and she's responsible for her own injuries. Yes, Your Honor. Well, let's get into the legal sauce. How did you get to rent this apartment? Well, Your Honor, I met Arthur, got stuck in the elevator with him. We began talking, and, you know, I was a little nervous, so he, he, he helped me, you know, calm me down, and I let on that I was looking for an apartment, and he told me that he owned an apartment building that had a vacancy. So that just seemed like it fell into my lap. So you owned an apartment building? Yes, but le le let me tell you what happened, Yana. I'm okay. the landlord, and I'm the owner of the building. The only thing I don't understand is why she ain't stated in the testimony that me and her dated for about a year, Yana. So you... First of all, what does that have to do with today? That has nothing to do with today. Well, is that true? You all did used to date? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Your Honor. We did used to date, but that has nothing to do with today. Ms. Siegel, how long were you in this apartment before this incident? About two years, Your Honor. And during that two years, was it pretty much event-free? I wouldn't say event-free, but it just... It started getting bad recently. What? Well, to be there two years, I imagine you were somewhat happy, right? Yeah, the first year we dated. Well, y'all know we ain't here about you all's past relationship, right? I appreciate you sharing that with me. Obviously, it means something to you, but from a legal perspective, it doesn't really bear on the issues in this case. So tell me about the incident where you got hurt. Okay, well, Your Honor, I broke up with him and I met a new man, Big D. That's my baby right there. Come on, man. So we went out on a date and, you know, I brought him back to my place. It, it, it was, you know, I was ready for, you know, to show him some things. So we're in my living was. room. We're in my living room and we're like kissing. So I stop him for a minute and I say, give me a second. I go in the room, you know, get all dolled up and everything. And then I call him into the room. So when he got there, I'm standing in front of my swing. I, I want to show him just exactly, you know, what I can do. So... I get in a swing, and I swing back, forth, maybe one time, and then, boom, everything just came down, Your Honor. The ceiling, everything. I landed on my back, my head. I, I, there was blood. I couldn't even move. I just remember screaming in agony and... So the ceiling actually collapsed? It actually collapsed, Your Honor. Like, and it just came down. Well, when the ceiling came down, are you actually in the swing? Yes, Your Honor. Is this what the ceiling looked like? Yes, Your Honor. So that uh, big piece of that came out there, Mr. Davis. What's going on with that? I don't even know, Yana. I don't even know how that happened, because when we used it, we ain't never had no problems with the sex one, Yana. 
So, Mr. Davis, you and Miss Siegel actually used this swing before this day? Yeah. And y'all didn't have any problems in the he past? He installed it, Your Honor. Your Honor. He bought it and he installed it. So, Mr. Davis, you installed this swing? You see this right here? In case you missed it, Your Honor, this is not your typical eight-year-old swing. It's a sex swing, Your Honor. It's an entertainment swing. Okay, so, so how does that hang from the ceiling, Mr. Davis? Just grab this part right here. You grab the bracket and you hold it up there. And that's it. You're ready Seems to go. Like okay, he knows but what wait a minute. You, you don't hold it while you're doing no, stuff, No, no, right? no, no, no. You got to attach it to the ceiling. It comes with a bracket. If it's going to work right, it doesn't come down, right? Yeah, and it was working right for a while, so I don't know what happened. It was fun, Yana, but it has its weight limit, Yana. She was actually smaller when we bought the swing. Wait a minute. Hey, hey, hey. About hey, 20, we, we, 30 we, we, pounds. We, 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 we're not going to go there. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm not gaining hey, weight. Look, we're not going to go there. Uh, hey, hey. M Jay, Mr. Not, Johnson. Would you on a reverse keto diet or something? Hey, look. Mr. Johnson. Hey, yo, little D, sit down, little D. Sit down. We're going to have order in this uh, courtroom. I've got somebody by my side who's bigger than both of y'all, and he's got a gun. So we're going to have order in this courtroom. Yana. Yes, sir, Yana. Now, Mr. Davis, one, we're not going to insult anybody. I'm a big dude. I ain't, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make fun of her. I'm just saying she was smaller. Well, we well how would I know there's a weight limit on that? I read the instructions before I installed it in the bedroom, Your Honor. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, Miss Siegel, did you know there was a weight limit on the swing? Yes, but I'm nowhere near that weight limit. Okay, so you're sitting in the swing. Mr. Johnson's there. For the record, your name is Damian Johnson, right? It's Big D, Your Honor. Well, that's not it's your legal D. name, though, right? That's what you go by. Well, that's what Big D get called. Okay. All right, Big D. Thank you very much, John. What do you remember about this night? All right, so on the night particularly in question, all right, this was our 91st day of dating. Mm -hmm. All right, Susan, she had this... But who's counting, huh? Well, I, I counted every day of every minute, if you want to know the truth, Your Honor. Yes, Because sir. Susan had this 90-day, uh, you got to wait before you get any type of, <laughs> you know... I'm a lady, Your Honor. Action. I got to hit uh, the first time I met her, say, Your Honor. Okay. She made him hey, wait. Hold on. Right away. I didn't have to wait. Don't, don't worry about where Big D go. <laughs> or what Big D does. Whatever, man. Stay out of Big D's business. Well, well hey, I'll you might say have this. to wait, but you know what I'm saying? Good things come Y'all's waiting two periods ways. don't concern me, okay? So you're sitting there, Miss Siegel gets in the swing. What happens? Well, she got in the swing, and she she did a couple, like one, two, then crack! And everything just like came down. It was crazy, y'all. The ceiling started coming down, and I, first thing jumped in Big D's mind was. Big D was thinking to save his woman. Mm -hmm. And so you went to her rescue. Right, and I went to her rescue. I got her up out of the rubble. Then first thing Big D did was to call 911. Did Big D realize that Miss Siegel was hurt? Yeah, yes, Your Honor, because the ceiling was on top of her. Miss Siegel, tell me about your injuries. What happened to you? Well, I mean, I have cracked vertebrae, Your Honor. Even standing here right now, I'm in a lot of pain. I'm depressed about it, and, and most of all, because the swing came down, we never got to get our freak on, and I can't even do that now. Miss Siegel, you believe it's, it's Mr. Davis's fault because... I, why do you think it's his fault? It's his fault because he, was my, he wasn't maintaining the building, Your Honor. That building had leaks. I'm not the only one that's had the leaks. I've complained to him about the leaks. So, Mr. Davis, you got this building. Did Yana, you have leaks? No, no. Yana, first of all, Yana, she never mentioned the leak. Let me just Yana, tell you something. Uh -uh, Yana, uh-uh, I'm gonna tell you right now. He's She's lying. over demanding, mm -hmm. Yana. Like, she complains about everything. Like I said, Yana, she's a chronic complainer. I texted him about the leaks. I mean, did she ever call you about leaks? No, she never mentioned a leak in the... Um, Your Honor, Your Honor. Did you that, notify him about I leaks? I did, and I, I even texted him. Your Honor, I even brought the text message printed out for you to see. The text messages don't lie. Sheriff Matt, please get the text messages. Let's see what they are. The green is you, right, Miss Siegel? Yes, Your Honor. Can you send someone garbage is building up in the trash room? Do you remember getting that, Mr. Davis? That oh, text? Yeah. No, I don't. All right, but you did write back at one point, no problem. So you got it at some point. Probably did, John, and I probably took care of it. That's why I said no problem. Then the next problem. day, Miss, Miss Siegel writes, the stain I showed you in the bedroom is getting bigger. Can you mm. please get over here? Did she exactly. show you the stain in the bedroom? No, Yana, I don't know if it was a bed sheet, the floor. I don't know. She didn't, she didn't tell me what it was, Yana. Well, well the stain you're did... talking about, Miss Siegel, is the one on the ceiling. Yes, Yana, the one right above my swing. And you never saw a stain near the swing on the ceiling? Yana, if I would have known, I would have came over and I would have took care he of it, Yana. knew. So you didn't have any leak problems in your building? No, Yana. 
Mr. Davis, you believe that this had nothing to do with the condition of your building or the condition of her apartment. You believe she just simply shouldn't have been using that swing. Yes, Your Honor. Yes. And this is all her fault. Yes, it is, Your Honor. I even crazy. told her to take it down. I wanted to be careful, and she didn't listen. You want me to take it down because I wasn't using it with you anymore? <laughs> Ms. Siegel, yes, you have submitted $65,000 in medical bills to this court. Yes, Your Honor. You've, you've obviously got a pretty big financial burden. You're also asking this court for $25,000 for your future medicals. How are you going to pay these bills? I don't know, Your Honor. I really... I, 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 I have no idea how I'm supposed to take care of myself. You know, no one plans for this. With a cracked vertebrae and herniated disc, how do you do your job? I see you're asking for $60,000 for lost wages. I cannot, Your Honor. I can't drive. I can't... Standing is hurting me, and I can't sit for long periods of time, so I cannot work, Your Honor. Mr. Davis, you see that this is a... This is a life impact. I understand, Your Honor, but I'm not... I'm not at fault. What does Big D think about this experience? Your Honor... How can he not be at fault when he... Not only did he install it, it's his building. And for not the upkeep of it. Well, let me give you a legal lesson, though. Simply because something happens in your building, that fact alone does not mean that Mr. Davis is responsible. Mm. What I've got to figure out as the judge is this event, is it caused by something he failed to do or didn't do correctly? Now, Ms. Siegel, obviously, these sex wings have some limitations. Were you paying attention at all as to whether there was a weight limit on this one? Yes, Your Honor. I knew it was 300 pounds, and I'm nowhere near 300 pounds. Now, uh, Big D didn't get in this oh, sex wing. No, 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 right? no, Your Honor. No, this, this, no, is a, no, Your Honor. this is a Big, single Big sex wing. Big D ain't made for, to be in the swing. Your Honor, they purposely deliberately damaged that ceiling, Yana. Somebody gonna... You think I would do this to you myself? You think I got my damages on my face? What? How so? Yana, she had called me talking about she had gotten a new job in a new city, and if I can let her out of Felice early, Wait, Yana, I have a voicemail to prove new it, Yana. Well, you, you have submitted Yana, you that talking? audio to this court. Yes, but, Yana. But you think what? she went through this whole thing just to get out of her lease? Yes, Yana. Well, let's listen to the I audio. I do that. Hey, it's me, Sue. So, I'm calling because I may have just snagged this Bang a new job in Vegas. Vegas? So, I was wondering if you could help me out by, oh. I don't know, letting me out of the last four months of my lease? Mm -hmm. Anyway, give me a call when you get this message. Thanks. Bye. So, you weren't gonna tell Big D about none of this? We were gonna talk about that. Oh, she didn't tell you. No, no, don't, don't start studying. Well, all this stuff happened. When we're finished, we'll send y'all to couples court. <laughs> Ms. Siegel, you were trying to get out of your lease, right? Your Honor, I was trying to get out because of the leaks, Your Honor. I kept telling him about the lease, and he would never come check it. Your Honor, she... But you admit you wanted to get out early so you could head out to Vegas. Your even Honor, even my... Big D is surprised by that. But my new job wouldn't start until two weeks before my lease time. was up anyway. Mr. Davis, you think she would go through all this and tear your place up just Your to Honor. get out of a lease? Why not just leave? Your Honor, she probably pulled the damn swing down, Your Honor. Oh, so now I'm Popeye? I got, I got strength like that? Probably wait, you and Big D over here. That's probably why you got him. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, listen. This, this is what I want. I can't believe Big D didn't invested all this time into you. Wait. We're not here about that. I did 91 days first. Now I... We're not here about that. I did 91 minutes. Big D is, is just derailed, sideswiped or something. Big, Big D don't know how to take this right now. We haven't had a chance to talk about it. I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm... Big D can't take this. <laughs> Goodbye, Big D. You all alone now, huh? Miss Siegel, did you pull this swing down and try to get out of your lease? No, Your Honor. Who would do this to themselves? I have a deposition from my neighbor who saw the stain that I told him about in the text. Sheriff Matt, will you retrieve the deposition from Ms. Siegel? Let me take a peek at it. This is a statement from Miss Betty Johnson, apartment 3D, and it reads, I saw the water stain on Ms. Siegel's ceiling. It was up around the swing. I was shocked that she was into that sort of thing, but that's none of my business. <laughs> The water stain was pretty bad. It looked similar to the one I had a few years ago. I was lucky the building inspector saw mine and told me that I wasn't the only one with the problem. They promised they were all going to be fixed. 
and they were. Y'all did have a leak problem in this building, Mr. Davis. Your Honor, I fixed it. Is this lady lying too? I fixed it, Your Honor. I so fixed you fixed it. it? Yes, Your Honor. But mine I fixed wasn't. It. All right. You never so told me about a leak in your ceiling. If you had known about the leak, would you have fixed it? If she would have told me, I would have fixed it. Hmm. Folks, I think I've heard what I need to hear. Really? I'm ready to render my decision. <laughs> this, like every other personal injury case that I've done as a judge, requires that the plaintiff prove three things. You have to prove that Mr. Davis did something wrong or failed to do something. Okay. You have to prove that his wrong caused your injuries. Clearly, you were injured. You've put evidence before this court that show that you've got some pretty severe back injuries. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Davis, you don't believe that this is your fault because you say you didn't know about the stains on the ceiling and the leaks in the building. Yes, Your Honor. If there ever was a case where the legal concept of comparative negligence applies, it is this one. Here, you as the landowner, as the landlord, have responsibilities to keep your place in good repair. But only as to those things that you know are defects or you should have known are defects, you should in a reasonable time address those and keep your tenant safe. You, Ms. Siegel, have the responsibility of putting him on notice, but also of taking care of yourself. I think you have proven Mr. Davis is wrong. That is, you should have taken this swing down. This does not crash like this because a bolt came out. This swing failed and that ceiling failed because you had a history of leaks. I find you've proven his wrong. Thank you. But he's not the only one wrong. You had an opportunity to avoid this whole thing because you saw the stains too. You had been in that swing. You knew other people were complaining. In this case, I find, Mr. Davis, that you are two-thirds wrong. Miss Siegel, you are one-third wrong, but because you're one-third responsible, I'm giving you two-thirds of what you ask. I find in your favor for $200,000 against Mr. Davis. That's my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. Wow. Thank you, Your Honor. Pay up. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Andrew Finkelstein has to say. This is a perfect example of how diligent investigation can make a claim. By interviewing people with knowledge of defects in the defendant's building, the plaintiff found a witness who actually saw the water stain on the ceiling before the swing fell and was willing to provide testimony. This was critical to show the defendant knew or should have known of the ceiling defect, and yet he did nothing to repair it, thus causing the plaintiff's injuries. Oh, man. What's wrong with my building, man? Hey, I'm sucking. Like, come on, man. Y'all don't be a hater. Make sure you don't take my money. I don't think that's money. fair, y'all. That's not fair, man. Want my money. Right, man.